Today I'm making a planner box. It looks like this. It cost me $41 to make, and you can make one too by jotting down some notes while watching this video, or by checking out the plans linked below where I've conveniently jotted down all the notes for you. All right, here's what we need. Five six-foot cedar fence boards that are five-eighths of an inch by five and a half, and two eight-foot redwood two-by-twos. I'll start by cutting the two-by-twos to length at the miter saw, both at the same time. All we need here is two cuts at 22 and a quarter inches and four cuts at 11 and three quarters. These are all the pieces that will make up the frame for the box. The longer ones are the legs, the shorter ones are the stretchers that connect the legs to each other, and all we have to do here is drive one three inch screw through the leg into the stretcher, basically creating a cube with legs. But we have to be careful where we put these screws. This is a mock-up of a corner of the frame. This is where those black screws are gonna sit eventually when we put the slats on here in a minute. If we drive one of these three inch screws roughly in the center of the leg, about a third of the way down on the stretcher and into this stretcher, and then do the opposite over here, go about the middle of the leg, about a third of the way up into this stretcher, we won't have any issues with screws interfering with one another. If we just go throwing these screws in here all willy-nilly, we're most likely going to end up having at least a few spots where they're gonna interfere, and that's a bad thing. So, middle, third of the way down on this side, middle, third of the way up on this side, and you're good to go. Now, when the frame is done, it should look something like this. Well, it should look exactly like this, with the bottom stretchers installed 10 inches down from the top. Now, this whole next process is optional, but this is how I milled the material to make mine. I start by cutting four of my fence boards at a time. Two cuts at 16 inches, two cuts at 15 inches. Then I run them all through the table saw with my straight edge push block to give them all one clean straight edge to then run against my table saw fence. Then I can turn them all around and rip them two and a half inches wide. Now I can take all the 15 inch boards back to the miter saw, square off one end, and then cut them to a final length of 14 and a half inches. To determine the final length of the longer slats, I'll clamp a slat on two opposite sides of the frame and then take a measurement from the outside edges. Then I'll cut all the 16 inch pieces to that measurement. The plans call for these slats to be at 15 and 3 quarter inches long, but I would double check just in case because extra thick or thin fence boards will change this measurement by quite a bit. With all the slats cut, we can drill two pilot holes into each end of each slat. The short slats get holes drilled one inch from the ends, and the longer slats get holes drilled at an inch and five eighths from the ends, both at five eighths of an inch from the top and bottom of the slat. I made a couple of quick MDF templates to help me get all the holes in the, ah, man. Anyways, templates are your friend, just make them better than I made mine the first time. With the pilot holes drilled, I can start installing the short slats. Working from the top of the frame, I flush the top and sides of the slat to the frame, drill into the pilot holes with the countersink bit, and then fasten the slats down with these black inch and five eighths deck screws. Now, you need 144 black screws for this planter, and as it turns out, not all one pound boxes of black deck screws are created equal, or at least have enough in the package. I ended up running out of screws and I had to go get more, so I'll leave a link below to the ones that I eventually found that have just enough in the box, as well as the countersink bit that I used and some other stuff you might find useful. The slats get installed with a quarter inch gap between them. I used the blade of my tri-square to set the gap, but a rip of MDF or something would work great here as well. And once both short sides are done, I can work on the long sides. This is even easier because we don't even need the quarter inch spacer here. We just line up the long slats edges to the short ones and hammer home, only with screws. But don't, ha don't hammer the screws, you get it. Because of the varying thicknesses with fence boards, you may have more than a few that seem a little long. A quick way to trim off just a little bit is to push one end against your miter saw blade to deflect it a little, lift up, and then make the cut. This takes off about half a blade's width pretty consistently, but make sure you do it from both ends or your screws won't line up with the ones below it or above it. And as promised, we have a planner box, but we still need to install the top cap. And for that, I use the same cut rip cut method that I used before to cut the last fence board into two pieces, two inches by 15 and three quarter, and two pieces, two inches by 11 and three quarter. But again, make sure that you measure the box that you make before making your cuts. 
To install the top cap pieces, I used the same inch of 5 8 deck screws, a little over three inches from the ends so that they don't interfere with any screws below it. And yes, these are tan, not black. Like I said, I ran out of the black ones, but after a trip to the hardware store and after staining the box with a cedar tone exterior stain and staining the top cap with a solid black acrylic deck stain, I could swap the tan screws out with the black ones and now my planner box is complete. So there you go, a modern looking, easy enough to make planner box that looks a little different than most of the other DIY options out there. Again, plans and links to cool stuff down in the description. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.